I would now like to invite Ms. Melinda Pavek to please take the stage and say a few words. Good evening, friends. It is an honor to be here at the closing ceremony of the Hornbill Festival, especially because today, December 10th, 2023, also marks the 75th anniversary of one of the world's most groundbreaking global pledges, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. This landmark document enshrines the inalienable rights that everyone is entitled to as a human being, regardless of race, color, religion, sex, language, political or other opinion, national or social origin, property, birth, or status. This document remains an aspiration in many ways, and our efforts to live up to its full potential are inherent in our values as people, as communities, as tribes, and as nations. Festivals like this one, with the 17 major Naga tribes represented together in partnership, are a way of preserving the unique cultures that make this state special, which is why it is so important to enshrine and ensure that each person's inalienable human rights continue. With those rights also come responsibilities. The responsibility to vote for good governance, the responsibility to support the rule of law, and of course, the human right of freedom of expression brings with it the responsibility to advocate for advancements and improvements in society without hatred against specific people or groups. This is increasingly challenging in a world where we spend more time on social media than we do talking to our neighbors and the members of our community who are from other backgrounds, which makes this festival extra special. Thank you for being here today to honor all of the tribes of this great state. I am also honored to have with me two representatives from three great Native American communities. My nation, the United States, made many mistakes in our treatment of our tribal communities. Today, tribal nations in the United States still face many barriers to fully exercising their inherent sovereignty, especially in federal funding programs. On December 6th, as a part of the White House Tribal Nations Summit, President Biden signed an historic executive order to ensure that tribal nations have greater autonomy over how they invest federal funding. The U.S. executive order affirms that tribal self-governance is about the fundamental right of a people to determine their own destiny and to prosper and flourish on their own. This festival may be one of the first festivals in India and the Northeast to include U.S. tribal nation participants as performers, but I believe that it won't be the last. because the bonds of our people in pursuit of peace and prosperity for the betterment of our planet grow stronger each and every day as we build connections through events like this one. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here today to commemorate this special day with you. Thank you, ma'am, for your kind words. I would now like to call upon Dr. Andrew Fleming to please say a few words of greetings. Good evening, Nagaland. I still can't hear you. Good evening, Nagaland. Kiniga Asa.
Honorable Tourism Minister Along and um, my, my, my good friend, um, the U.S. Consul General, General Melinda um, Pavek, as well as um, Mr. Meta and other dignitaries on the dais. Others um, up on the stage. I have a few friends from my previous five and a half years in India sat up there as well. Hello to you. Um, it's wonderful to be here for the Hornbill Festival. And thank you so very much, Honorable Chief Minister Nifu Rio, for the invitation to join this festival. For my wife and I, it's only one month since we arrived in Calcutta to take up a role of representing the 13 eastern and northeastern states as uh, the British Deputy High Commissioner um, to East and Northeast India. And I really op appreciate the opportunity to be coming here at festival time, starting off with the uh, end of the um, Durga Puja celebrations in Calcutta and graduating via Kali Puja and uh, a number of other celebrations from um, Bihar and Jharkhand, uh, and then being able to come to the Northeast to celebrate Farmer's Day in Meghalaya last weekend and this weekend, which is absolutely the highlight for my wife and I to be here for uh, the Hornbill. And let me say that um, just as my High Commissioner, Mr. Alex Ellis, was a guest at the inaugural and was thrilled with the program and the courtesies extended by everybody here. So my wife and I have had the most wonderful couple of days immersing in Nagaland, getting to understand your culture, your history, mixing with um, the, different, uh, the different tribes, uh, and watching some amazing performances here on the stage. Let me say that the UK is very keen to engage more deeply with Nagaland, not just culturally, but in different sectors, including potentially horticulture, healthcare, skills training, education. We need to explore more, and coming in the middle of a festival perhaps is not the best time to be having those conversations. But let me promise you that my team and I will be back and back soon. Another area that uh, we're keen to um, explore is the visitor economy, as tourism has huge potential in a state like Nagaland. And just as the Department for Culture, Media and Sport in, um, in my country, the UK, had worked uh, to map the uh, Durga Puja from that perspective. So I hope that we can work with um, the uh, Nagaland state government to map the Hornbill in a similar way and hopefully get greater benefit from it for the people of this state. UK and Nagaland also share a love for music and our musicians have collaborated in past Hornbill festivals under the auspices of the British Council. I very much hope that we can connect Nagaland musicians. By the way, your talent is absolutely immense. And British young musicians together, perhaps to collaborate jointly in a future Hornbill Festival to entertain the ever-growing uh, and wonderful crowd that attends. The colorful spectacle of the Hornbill Festival is truly admirable, and I congratulate each and every one of you on the, congratulate, on the completion of another successful edition of the Hornville Festival. The amount of hard work and preparation and coordination that is required to organize an event on this scale that is so well thought out is truly commendable. So as I've already said, I look forward to being back with our friends in Nagaland very soon, some of my team I hope even sooner. And I will conclude with my first attempt in Angomi out of respect to Honorable Chief Minister, Nirko Petty Pejer. 
Thank you so much, sir. We look forward to the collaboration with the Nagaland government. To give the vote of thanks, I would kindly request Sri Tamjan Imna Along, Minister of Tourism and Higher Education, to do the honors. First of all, I thank Almighty God for this beautiful 10 days of the Hornbill Festival at Kesama. And to be standing here on behalf of the Honorable Chief Minister, Sri Nephew Ryo, and on behalf of the government of Nagaland, on the closing speech, I am humbled before you all. Excellencies, honorable guests and invitees, honorable minister from Assam, our partner state, Ranjit Dasji and his wife, friends from Japan who are sitting there, honorable advisors and MLAs, invitees, dear participants, Friends, my dear fellow citizens, ladies and gentlemen, as we stand on the brink of bidding adieu to the 24th edition of the Hornbill Festival, it is my honor and privilege to deliver the closing remarks and express our heartfelt gratitude to everyone who has contributed to making this event an exceptional celebration of Naga heritage. Over the past nine days, we witnessed a remarkable coming together of diverse communities, each representing a unique facet of Nagaland. Tribes, government bodies, NGOs, businesses, entrepreneurs, artists, and enthusiasts joined hands at the foothills of Mount Jafu to weave a beautiful picture of cultural richness and share the essence of the Naga heritage with the world. The festival has been a platform for the exchange of knowledge, experiences, and the celebration of unity in diversity. Our sincere appreciation goes out to all our distinguished chief guests, honored guests, and invitees who graced us with their presence, adding to the vibrancy and significance of this cultural extravaganza. Your support has been invaluable, and we are truly grateful for the time and enthusiasm you have devoted to the Hornbill Festival here at Kesama. A special acknowledgement is owed to our sponsors and partnering agencies. The Ministry of Tourism, Government of India, Honda Motorcycle and Scooter India Private Limited as mobility partner, Ricket, the birds and bees stock as health and hygiene, Indian Oil Corporation, State of Bank of India as associate partners, PepsiCo as beverage, and Limatra as accommodation partners for their valuable support. Even there are many more other partners like the Toyota and the various other partners that have partnered with the Hornbill Music Mega Festival. Their collaboration has been instrumental in elevating the festival to new heights. To the cultural troops and artists who showcased the kaleidoscope of Naga traditions and talents, your performances have been extraordinary, breathing life into the festival and leaving an indelible mark on our hearts. In these times, the call for unity is more pertinent than ever, not just within our sector, but throughout our society. The Hornbill Festival symbolizes the unity to work together, take responsible steps, and progress hand in hand. The shared vision 
is one that we can only achieve collectively. A heartfelt thank you to the organizers, the Department of Tourism, Art and Culture, Industries and Commerce, Agri and Allied, Home Department, Tourist Police, TAFMA, NEZCC, and all allied departments. Your commendable efforts have laid the foundation for a festival that fosters collaboration, inclusivity, and the celebration of Nagaland's rich cultural heritage. To our dear tourists and visitors, you arrived as strangers, but will depart as friends. We wish you a safe journey home, carrying with you the sweet memories of your time in our humble land. Be our ambassadors, sharing the tales of Nagaland's warmth and diversity. And we hope to welcome you back next year with even more friends and family. Before I end my speech, I would like to take another one minute. My dear friends and family who are here, especially why the Hornbill Festival? Why Hornbill? We are at the 24th edition of the Hornbill Festival at Kesama. By the blessings of Almighty God and under the visionary leadership of our Honorable Chief Minister Sri Nephew Ryo and all the people who are involved in it. Many of you may not know why you have to come to the Hornbill Festival. And why do we use the bird, the Hornbill, as our theme, as our logo for this festival? According to what I have come to know through friends and my people, the Hornbill bird resonates itself like the Naga people. And the Naga people, among all the birds that fly in the air, resonates itself with the hornbill bird. Many of us come here to enjoy, have fun, look at the, watch the culture, the traditional dances, the arts, the music, and everything. But I wish that all of us would know that in the distant past, stories and folklores of the hornbill festival, the hornbill bird has been spoken about in our folklore. It depicts faithfulness, it depicts commitment, and it depicts unity. Yesterday night, I came to hear the story from one Uku Lepton, who has been part and parcel of curating in the past the name and the logo of this hornbill. Why the hornbill bird? Because it is a very different and special bird, just like the Nagasa. Before it mates, before it mates with its, uh, the lady hornbill, it seems they take a commitment. The commitment that the hornbill man will take care of its woman, will take care, and until the chicks are laid from the eggs and it comes out, the man gives the commitment and the wife asks the man that you will keep us and take care of us. And that's when a hole, a hollow is uh, made on a tree or in a hollow which is already there. And then the lady hornbill goes inside, takes out all of its feathers and lays its eggs inside. And the hornbill bird flies near and far and brings the needed food and the insects or the fruits that are need to be fed feeding the bird. And as the hole is closed by mud and only the lady mouth's beak is out, the hornbill bird commits itself to taking care of its family. The loyalty, the commitment, it takes care of it. And it seems if the male bird dies somewhere or anywhere, the whole family is gone. The whole family is gone. But it is also that once the uh, eggs are opened up and the chicks come forth, and as the time grows for the uh, lady and the 
chicks to come out of the bill. The male takes off the mud that has covered the hole and they come out together and then it seems they celebrate for a number of days. And the envisioning of the Hornbill Festival for the Nagas is very much it resonates the celebration of faithfulness, the celebration of unity, the celebration of being faithful to each other, the celebration of being united, the celebration of taking care of each other. And today, the 17 tribes of the Nagas come together to celebrate faithfulness for each other, unity in its own traditional and cultural heritage, and here we have come thus far. So my dear young friends and people, as you go back, not only as Nagas, but as non-Nagas, our guests, our tourists, our friends, kindly take back the message of unity among us and also among you all, and resonate with the Hornbill Festival and come to celebrate again on the 25th Hornbill Festival. Thank you, and until we meet again, in the spirit of the Hornbill, soaring high and free, good evening and enjoy. Cook Nalim and Jain. Thank you, sir, for your vote of thanks and bringing the 24th Hornbill Festival to a close. We hope to see all of you again at the 25th edition of the festival. As our guests leave the stage, please give them a big round of applause.